Welcome to a Thursday night at 9.30 on Beltway Radio and Beyond. I go by the name of Cortez, and it should go without saying that this is not Chip Chat. So, for the 10 people who uh, tuned in to hear Chip Chat, sorry. Um, what we do have tonight is a deviation from the normal proceedings. Um, with me is my longtime brother, my, my brother, Big Yay. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. Um, and this might never happen again, uh, but it's <laughs> happening tonight. So, this is what we so got. here we go. Here we go, here we go. Um, I guess I feel like intros is probably important, because, you know, people tune in to probably see yeah. Chip, and, you know, he's not here, so that's yeah. cool, but we're going to go, you know, I guess whatever you want to, again, put out there and, uh, like, or, like, I don't know, our friendship or anything, or how this even might happen man, of us being. Man, okay, okay. So, Big Ye, on Ye, name just keep getting shorter and different things my whole life. Right. But you and I, second grade. Right, exactly. We go back a long you time. You know, second grade, so uh, it's, it's, it's easy to talk to you. Right, yes. It's, it's easy to have conversation with you. Yeah. And so, and, and, and beyond that, the middle school and the high school still – Brotherhood. Exactly. Music, yeah. studio, mics, cadence, chemistry. So it's only a matter of time. Yeah, and it, it was only a matter of time. And we talk about this a lot, like, for us. And as most folks know, when Chip is out, Brian knows it's a day, it's a day off. Hey, I don't know. Well, not a day off for you because you got a lot of work to do. But a day off for me. For you. As most folks know, um... And as you'll see tonight, like, no, actually, there was a little decent preparation. You heard it was a new song. It was like, not even a new song, a new, a new intro track, a new yeah. something, something. So a little bit, this will, this will throw folks off. But, yeah, I mean, we go back a long time. We, we talk sure, about sure. doing this uh, before everybody was doing, like, podcasts. We always talked about it. And then it feels like yeah, everybody man. was doing a podcast. And now it's like, like, eh. But this isn't a podcast. This is live radio. Which, <laughs> which you know. I did in college. That is true. Yes, at the radio show. Yeah, late so. nights. You know, we, we we weren't as prepared. You know, similar to yeah, it's, it's you know, what this how outfit you, how is. You like to go, so yeah. <laughs> we played a lot of music. We played a hey. lot of music back in those times. You know, yeah. So, um, sorry to everyone. Like, usually, what would happen is we would come on here and we probably talk like Trump indictment. Uh, um, we were like, I mean, uh, but yeah, that, that happened obviously. So that's there, but that, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Um, there's a, your house stinks. Oh, <laughs> exactly. So if you tuned in for that, I, I can understand. Um, yeah, man, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to chop it up about, I feel like things that, you know, conversations we might have if we were just like chilling. Yeah. So it's going to be very, uh, very uh, conversational tone and, and show tonight. And my promise also to uh, Brian is that we're going to get out of here on time. Uh, are we? All right. We don't, yeah, that's the plan. 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 Um, okay. Because we like to, I, I always like to let folks like know what's happening. Like I can't even get into the uh, the show sheet on my, my computer, which usually, you know, I go on to uh -oh. But it's okay, though, because, you know. You, like, you, you need my computer? That would be kind of crazy, like, to shoot, like, your computer over here on there. But, like. Oh, because of my, my array. Of yeah. I mean, but even then, like, I mean, <laughs> luckily there's there's multiple, um, like, technology devices that are here on this show. And, yeah, we'll, we'll be okay with that. Make it work. Um. Just to like check in, give folks like I guess a preview of uh, next week. I think substantial is coming on next week. Correct. I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could be. We could be wrong on that one. I substantial. don't know. Substantial. Yes, and I hope I'll be able to, like. Yeah, no, we've, we've had him on before. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we we like to kind of keep it chill and, and easy on this show. There is one thing that. Um, we do on this show, and we're going to try, like, I'm going to try to, like, do it here as well. Um, so Chip usually, like, when we exit out of this, it was the weirdest thing whenever, when he showed, when he, like, we, we did this for the first time. But, like, we exit out of, like, the intro segment where we just take these random words, right? So, like, just to give you an example, okay. it'd be like, it's like an example, like, just, like, he'll usually be, like, 
sit back and then I'll be like, or he'll be like, uh, sit back, grab some, and then I'll be like, blank word, and then he'll be like, it's blank time, and then yada, 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 and that's what we'll go ahead and um, we'll do. So just keep that in hit, like just a blank word, like just a random word you want to, but okay. that would be the cadence okay. for it. Um, yeah, and I guess also choose to be, I mean, to keep this on track how we usually do, um, what we want to talk a little bit on the show today is like, we're going to talk a little bit about like, you know, guns. Yeah. We're going to talk yeah. about a little bit about guns. Yes. We're going to yeah. talk about some guns and just, you know, if folks didn't see, there was obviously the case in uh, Newport News with the six-year-old and there was a, you know, a plea on that. So we're going to talk about that in a, hopefully a variety of interesting ways that you, you find interesting. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to kind of like, you know, hopefully from there we can kind of keep it fun and, and just, open. Yeah, keep it flowing. And keep just it keep flowing. it flowing. Yeah, so for sure. Um, so now we're going to try this this word. We're gonna okay. Try, okay. We're going to try this word. So, like, again, it's just going to be like, I'm going to be like, so sit back, grab some. You snatch. Okay, yeah, there you go. Well, that, so you did you already? All right. That, oh, you was already going for it. I was doing another test run of it. But but you got more work. Exactly. Come on, got, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, hey. Come on, man. All right, you got more <laughs> words for it. All right, so this is going to be the for real one here, and then we'll go into uh, a short break. Um, actually, I, I think we extended the breaks tonight. We were like, we're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy the breaks. Um, but, yeah, we're going to a short break after this. So, all right, we're going to – this is for real now. We on. We, gonna, we go. We're live on this one, all right. So <laughs> – <laughs> live on Damn, this. You're trying to hype yourself up, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm you not know, usually. I you know, know what's all right, coming. All right, all right, all right. You need some hot slam. Nah, right, exactly. Snacks. That is coming. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna repeat it. Let's talk. Let's let's just again. Let's just talk about usually how this show happens. Usually, usually Chip does a lot of preparation for the show. Okay. Usually, I stroll in here <laughs> a little bit later than I did tonight. Oh. Uh, yeah, a little bit, which is probably yeah. putting me on a minute before the show happens. And we just do the show, and I kind of go. So, like, today I'm in the driver's seat, and there was some preparation. But, again, sure. it wasn't full-on preparation that, like, Chip Chip does a great job on that. And, like, you know, kudos to him. Um, and if I had more time and I wasn't in Las Vegas rolling a lot of dice, um, <laughs> I would have done the same. And that doesn't explain the last 365-plus days, 52 weeks out of the – Last two years I've been on the show that I haven't did enough preparation, but we're gonna see how that goes. Mm -hmm. So now that I, <laughs> so now that I've hyped myself up, Brian, hype now Let's that go. I self hyped myself up, here we go. We're gonna try this. So, all right. So sit back, grab some snacks. It's blackout time. You're listening to the best show, the only show, a show on Beltway Radio and beyond. Sweet. Uh, black y'all, and I'm black y'all, and I'm blacker than black, and I'm black y'all, and I'm black y'all, and I'm black y'all, and I'm blacker than black, and I'm black y'all. This disc is only intended for use in a Sega Saturn game console. There is game data on track one, so please don't attempt to play back this disc. Thank you for your purchase of Full Metal Kaiju. Can't escape from crossing feet. We're gonna start it off a little something like this. Overblown locals only and back to going rogue alone. Poke my home, po golden vocal tone. Dig these, please, big cheese probe alone. Broken bows of foes buried in the graveyard. Impotent rappers better implement safeguards. Are riding in race cards. Call me the wise fool. Beat freaking. I peaked when I was in high school. Yeah, cards felt. This junkie gets funky like a fart smell. Hard sell. Today's rappers are heartfelt. Mike Source, Strike Force, Rick Martell. Yo, 50 pound barbells. Fly, retire, re MC to a high degree. By decree, yep, the president's keyzoid. Regiments deployed. Hotter than the summer sun, number one D boy. Ready on the right. Yo, yo. Ready on the 
reality, sick like a malady. Shrugs, no drugs, and raw dog in reality. Fallacy, hip-hop's a young man's game. Set of smoking that crack, shirt a drunk champagne. That's a dumb campaign, a dumb hill to die on. Boy, stand still, you can't kill an icon. Like a python, not some phony alpha technician. The definition, Tony Alva. Oh, yeah. Maniacal, roughneck, unrecognizable. Sizable chunks, punk rock, and dumb trucks. Dumb it's better run and come up with numb chucks. Somewhat fresh, yes, living in a camper van. Rapper man, Lord knows, wardrobe, dapper dam. Thinking of a master plan of attack mode. Crap load of rap, bad back to the back roads. Let's make a little bet, said it was done, didn't make it official yet. Frizzled vet with shovels and shoe horns, born outlaw, kicking open the saloon doors. Few more things to say and some new goals. Exams, eight diagrams, of bamboo poles. Not looking for shortcuts or loopholes. They career be around first, I'm out for poo holes. Cereal and sloop bowls, working on material. By any metric, I'm the imperial. Cold, magisterial, imperious, pompous, unchecked, lone suspect, no accomplice. Kid shows promise, quick drama, rock goes on and on and on and on. Freeze, sucker rams, he's like sheep, a thick wool, done. Executive producer, dead. This is it right here. No more heroes. All of the niggas I love to turn in the hoes. Got a hoes on hoes. Got a man, bitch, she was mad when she went to my phone. Okay, I know. I work for her tech, it got me moving slow. Got rolls on rolls. Bitch on my dick because I'm in my goal. Okay, I know. I wanna pick with a girl, so I'm striking a pose. Okay, I know. I got a bitch from the hills, I put coke in her nose. Okay, I know. Welcome back. You are tuned into a show, a show. on Beltway Radio uh, and beyond. <laughs> I'm, I got to try to explain because, I, again, we talked about me not having doing any preparation for this show a lot of the times. Um, and not a lot changed this evening around this. But, you know, again, as we keep saying, there was some preparation. What I have to distance myself and you from right here is the music choice, Okay. <laughs> who was that? Actually, yeah. Let me, who did we just give? Who? Who? I have no clue who that was. I don't know. And I, I just want to know. I mean, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to segue into some tough shit after this. But okay, uh, who was that? Is by uh, the song is called "No More Heroes" by High C. Wait, like the drink? Yeah, like the drink. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like orange fruit punch. Yes. So yeah. So okay. Let's. I'll oh. back it up because I okay, played three songs. So the first track was very brief. It was uh, "Full Metal Kaiju" by Kill Bill the rapper. Okay. Mm. Then the second really cool song was by Buck Sixty Five Super Dope, and then cool. then High C with his "No More Heroes." Okay. All right, no yeah, so heroes. no more heroes. I mean, like, you know, I could kind of get maybe, you, you know. Can, you can swim. You can swim with that. Yeah, no more heroes. Like, well, you know, shout out to High C. Be upstream. Um, <laughs> shout out to High C. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to tr- tr- we'll transition into, like, something, I guess, I mean, more of a heavy topic. Um, but one reason why I was excited to have a conversation with you and, like, go ahead and do the show with you is because I think we – 
we both enjoy like different things out of the realm. Like on this show, folks know for me, like I like to go play a lot of golf. Like that's yeah. kind of like. That's like, what you I, like. Yeah, I like to, you know, I read a lot of books and things. And, like, things that are, like, outside of just in general what most folks tend to do. Yeah. Um, and there, I mean, there's obviously, I'm not saying that nobody plays golf or reads books. People do that. But, you know. Right, right. But, like, right. sometimes throwing folks off or, like, oh, and they'd be like, oh, you into that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, one thing that I know that you understand and, like, <laughs> have a grasp on it's firearms. I do. And we kept we have a lot of discussions around this all the time. We do. Um, so I thought like as story um as the story broke uh a couple days ago, um most folks have heard that there was a shooting and the individual who's involved in the shooting was a six year old boy. Um he ended up shooting his teacher in Virginia. Um, I believe it's Rich Neck Elementary School. Um and the mother in the uh, in the Miss um, Taylor, Miss Taylor here, Deja Taylor, the mother of the boy, um, she was in federal court, um, and there were like charges that were obviously brought against her um, for obviously access, which we talk a lot about on this show, is like access to firearms and who has like yes. the access to it. Absolutely. Right. Um, but yeah, like the six year old having access to the firearm. And as I as I read through the story and and as I understood it from like hearing it in the past, like on NPR and shit like that, um, that her claim was the actual uh, gun was locked up, and you know there couldn't have been like there was like I guess in the bedroom like there was a um, mechanism like a lock of some sort, and that was kind of her argument. Um, but in this case, she ended up making a, like a plea. Um, foolish that that wasn't the case. Um, and I guess there's like a, a few areas of this story, and and there's also other charges, like because the the teacher who was shot is also I think um, filing charges against the school district. Yep. Um, so like there's a uh, a litany of different charges that are going on in this case, as you would expect when a six year old ends up bringing a gun to school and shooting the teacher. Um. But yeah, I feel like there's a, a, a variety of different um, avenues to go down this. But I guess, what is your viewpoint? Or like, just not obviously, we know your viewpoint like on the story. Like, we don't want six year olds to shoot people. My, yeah, but man. but obviously, my. like on like a more like on a, I guess on a, a thirty thousand foot level. Like, okay, how let's, do you f- this story? Yeah, let's get up. Let's let's get far away from the situation and look at it from the perspective of gun ownership in this country is seen as a right instead Mm. of a privilege. And when you can differentiate the two, you're a better firearm owner. You're just better at it because you don't see it as something I'm supposed to be able to have. You see it as something as a treat, something that you should take pride in owning, something that you should, if you, if you, people think of a safe as somewhere where you put valuables. Mm. But that's why I say it's a treat. It's precious. <laughs> it should go in a safe. Okay. And not in the ways of this woman's mechanism on the top shelf with a, a trigger lock of some sort, which means there's a key. If there's a key, curious children find everything. <laughs> curious children find everything. <laughs> you think you're good at hiding something? Man, let that six-year-old on the loose. You see what he did? <laughs> he got to a firearm. Yeah. And so when you take away the right out of the situation and you you sprinkle on top privilege and you tell people this is a privilege. There are mandates that come with owning this. There this is it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. It's a dangerous thing. It's a very dangerous thing. And and, and and you teach children not to touch the stove before they can speak. If you are going to own a firearm, the child the child should understand it's dangerous until you can teach them otherwise, in my opinion. And so, from a high level, it was irresponsible. It was negligent it, at, at an all-time high. And it's really sad because she feels guilty. Of course, yeah. She feels guilty. And that's why she went in there and said guilty and took a plea. Yeah. I, well, filed for it. Yeah, I, I mean... I can understand feeling guilty and going in because I think we can all 
collectively agree that no one wants six year olds to to have firearms to take to school. And like the, from <laughs> early on in the story, like before her, like taking this plea, one of the the earlier aspects a lot of folks grasp to uh, grasp on was that like yo there were warning signs before there were warning signs like <laughs> the little kid was telling folks like yo i'm like i'm packing if you Simply do this put, yeah he, i'm packing today y'all huh six yeah six we packing and if and the teacher recognized oh he's in a bad mood today oh i heard from another student he might have so no one snatched the little boy's book bag. He's six. I mean, I'm just saying, he's yeah, six. He's, yeah, exactly. snatching your book bag, and I'm saying what's inside. You don't have a locker at this point. <laughs> a cubby. You have a cubby and a book bag. Yeah, it's oh yeah, it's a cubby. I can go check that. That's no big deal. So there's negligence all around the situation from the parents, the school district, the principals. I mean, it's it's a sad situation because everything about accidental shootings were, well, in this case, purposeful by the six-year-old, but accidental negligence from the mom. Cause it, yeah, because it's, yeah. it's perfect. I, I have a question. It's okay, all right, all right. Yeah, Rick Brown, come on I was, I was hearing this, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. Okay, so the mom had it locked up. Supposedly. Supposedly. Supposedly, allegedly. Allegedly. What kind of gun is this? It's a 9 millimeter Taurus. Okay, it's so, <laughs> so why was there a clip inside? See, that that's I don't a get. Beautiful, that is a, a really beautiful question. <laughs> I mean, this is like, because my thinking would be, it's like, okay, <laughs> does the six-year-old know how to... Chamber you know, around. Yeah, Even put it in? Even if the magazine was inside, to your point, six-year-olds... It's got to be yeah. like, It's got to be ready to go, right? So it's ready to go, and it's a semi-automatic, meaning every round you shoot, mm -hmm. another one is it's loaded right, based right. on the, the, the right. combustion of the weapon. And so if there's not one in the chamber, depending on the pool, how many pounds you got to pull back, the serrations on it, how much grip you can get, mm -hmm. six-year-old's not, not doing yeah. that. Not doing that. Not doing that. So that's another level of negligence to where it was loaded. <laughs> it was loaded. So all he had to do was point and shoot. All he had to do was get his hands on it, and then that little six-year-old dangerous. Mm. And, and I think... Another area that how this also could have went is where we what we usually see in this country. That little six year old could be gone, could be gone playing, playing with it, playing with it. If it's mm -hmm. if, if from based on that explanation there, if you're saying like it's loaded, it's we just, know that if it wasn't, he would not hot. hot. Yeah, there you go, right? There. He he could have easily offed himself. Yeah, hundred percent. So. I don't know. I feel like as I think about the issue of guns in this, and like, like not even the gun, because then you say the gun itself, but more so like gun violence. When gun violence is... But gun violence yeah, starts with negligence. Yeah. It, it, in most cases, it starts with negligence. Yeah. Because my firearms are safe. They are safe. There's no way, and I have children, Two-year-old, yeah. four-year-old, very curious. <laughs> very curious little beings they are. Yeah. You know, a lot of questions, especially the four-year-old, getting into her question phase, why right. and who and what, when, where. Yeah. And there's no way. There's just no way they're going to be able to get their hands on it. And, then, you know, other pro-gun people or experts or whatever they want to call themselves might say, oh, well, if you got them locked up like that when you need them, how are you going to get to them? Mm hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> so, all right. So, for folks who have that question, what is the response? Like, what is like, <laughs> what, like, the I pose that, hey, yeah, I'm at a bar. You so you were having this conversation. I respond to you and ask you, like, yeah, what if they're locked up? How do I get to them when I need them? If, you that par if you're that paranoid and you then put it on you, mm. you put it on your hip and you walk around your house with a weapon on your hip. Not under the pillow over here. Not under the couch loaded shotgun in the corner. Oh, you never know. Uh, well, I do know. And outside of me knowing where the threat might come from or how the threat might enter my home, you you can have it on your head. And then when you go to bed, you lock it up tight. And you're going to have a second or two to chamber around. Someone has to get through a door. They have to get through a window. You will be able to chamber around. So you don't even need to leave the gun with the round in the chamber. 
but some might disagree with that. Once again, oh, you never, you got to be ready. I don't know who those people are hiding Ram, from. Rambo. I don't know who they hiding who, from. Who is? I don't know what they do for a living. Okay, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I don't know what they do. Because <laughs> based question, on what right? I do, exactly. man, this is a sport. Mm. It would be as if I had my golf club like on me, sport. Just, just on me at the just just on, just twirling, <laughs> twirling the driver, just like I wish a motherfucker would. No, no, man. I mean, it's. It's sport. It's sport. Um, and the thing that kills me the most is in some of these states, you can get your hands on it the same day. You walk in, you walk out. And now you have a firearm. You have no training. <laughs> you have no safe. <laughs> you got a firearm in a box of bullets. It sounds well, like a recipe for disaster. And no license. <laughs> and no license. Dumb oh, safe. you don't need to carry. Just have a driver's license. That's your carry license. In our state, you know, and that's where the state of Maryland, they make it tough, but they don't make it impossible. Mm. And that's what I say. They make it tough. They don't make it impossible. For people who think it's a right, they're not infringing. And that's a, that's a very, that wording and that phrasing is very key. Yeah. You say, make they, they make it tough, but they don't make it. It's not impossible. It, they're and not, they're not stepping on your two way, two way. Right to like, so they're not infringing upon the right the way yeah. we interpret this yeah. godforsaken this loose, law. Loose. Um, because what was he saying? Like we were saying earlier, even before we came on around the law, is just that like there was no imagination for the folks no. that's like crafting no. this because they would have put some, they put some <laughs> detail in that thing. If <laughs> they just said, "Go ahead, bear some arms, man, form a militia." Right. Check. Next. We doing three eight now. Okay. All right, like, bro. Come on, man. Like, it, and the thing is, they had no imagination for how creative we would become as humans. Mm, yeah. They didn't think there would be advancements in the cartridge in the way that it has advanced to where before. Okay, you need, you need your primer on top. You need your your your, your spark. You gotta load it up with the powder. And man, now all of that is in one simple round. Sheesh. Yeah. And, and so they first they didn't think about the cartridge. Then they didn't think about magazines that you could have multiple rounds. And reload. It, 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 you don't reload. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You don't reload. You load once and it's automatic that's true. reload. Yeah. They didn't think about that. So now when you have states or HEF saying magazine laws, Maryland, 10-round magazine out of a shop. But they're saying, hey, if you want to go to Virginia and buy 30 rounds and bring it back in, that's fine. But you're not going to buy 30 rounds in our state. So there, there's just levels. And see, certain things like that, okay, so now if Virginia said, we're going to do 10 rounds. And in Pennsylvania, Delaware said, we're going to do 10 rounds. Then West Virginia ha, said, we're going to do 10 rounds. <laughs> ha. <laughs> ha. West Virginia, <laughs> boy. That's, <laughs> come on now. So if the surrounding states all agreed, yeah, we're going to put a cap on these magazines. How do I get it? Mm. I don't. But I can go to Virginia because Virginia says, eh. Like West Virginia, eh. And that's what got this lady in trouble because of the fact that it is a privilege in that alcohol. Yes. Marijuana. I, this is a good point here because this you, is. Are you an abuser? Of substances. Because specifically on the user yeah. and an abuser. Because to get to that point, Linda, to even let you expound past that, the reason why she took the plea is because she did attest to not using marijuana, yep. to, like, not using alcohol. That's like, the paperwork. Yeah, that's part that's and paperwork. Yeah, right, that's that's part of the paperwork. Um, And that was found not to be true, or was going to be found, in a sense, not to be true. Yeah. Um, Which, again, but... That taking that plea is a whole different story. I mean, I, I think that a, a couple areas that I saw this story, and I, I right feeling a little, um, a little empathy for like her in the situation, which I know people want to always say I'm the one always trying to find other parts well, of this. You, I don't, you do, you but do. um, I'm just like one for her to take the plea. I think in any leak, and most folks who would like, I'm not a lawyer, but. And most folks, most folks who are in like any legal trouble is like, 
yo, you got to have folks prove that you that this happened. Absolutely. And I think by just taking the plea, and a, a lot of the time, specifically in our community, like folks are pushed to plea. And like in this case, I mean, yes, like the kid shot this, your six year old went in and shot a, a, the teacher, and the teacher like still got other kids out before she collapsed. Like this story was crazy. Yeah. This story was crazy. Yeah. Okay. Um, but like still to take that plea is tough for like to know. And I, I don't remember on what the outcome, which I would assume is probably going to be similar to this, but I guess it was in Michigan with the the boy who brought it to school. Um, I'm, I'm blanking on the exact story of that, but it was a boy that was in Michigan. And like, it's one of the similar cases where the parents didn't lock it up. And like, there was, Oh yes, 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 yes I forgot yes, the exact yes, story. Yes. I should have, again, preparation on this show is, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't, he wasn't. He wasn't six. It, he wasn't a six-year-old. He, right? he wasn't a six-year-old. He, he was old enough to know what he was doing. Exactly. So that's that's the line there. Yeah. Of demarcation, especially when you have older children, and you, and see, for me, my wife balances me out. She's not like a rah rah. Okay. Rah rah guns. Uh, yeah. Two A. So therefore, my kids aren't going to get baptized in firearms. Right. They will understand them. They will know how to use them, but. Going to the range and making them snipers and shark man, no, no, we don't. You're not gonna have a Christmas card. No, 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 we're not doing no Christmas, the Christmas cards, cards with, with, with ARs and all that. No, man. Oh um, no. man. Another part I kind of felt is like somewhere in this story, like here it is here, because the the teacher, I think it's, um, I want to say it's Abby Werner is is the teacher, yeah. um, but she's filed a lawsuit, mm-hmm. um that she went ahead and told, again, the assistant principal, um, Ebony Parker, that the boy threatened to beat up a kindergarten kindergartner and was in a violent mood in the hours before the shooting. A violent mood. I mean, and that's where I kind of want to hone in is that, and again, folks are going to be like, yo, why are you out here putting on your cape for this little boy that shot the teacher? But I'm like, and it's a six-year-old where he gets to a point where he's in a violent mood at school. What is wrong? What is it? What's going on in his life that, like, yeah, I'm... <laughs> ADHD, apparently. Uh, he yes. has ADHD. <laughs> you know, I a lot of kids. ADHD. <laughs> a lot of kids. You know? <laughs> but I wasn't, I wasn't going to the school with a kitchen knife and mad at people. Exactly. And so ADHD, okay, you, you, <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't focus. Does that mean you're violent? So for them to pull that out as any kind of reasoning or rationale for the boy's attitude is BS. Uh, that's it's BS. Some of the, and, like, some kids be upset. I, y'all done seen some upset kids. I've never seen a, one that was... I've never seen a six-year-old that I could look at and be like, oh, he's in a violent mood. There you go. I ain't never seen that. There you go. But obviously, if they saw that and they was they was ringing the alarm, like... Because usually, in my experience with teachers, like, they really love these kids. They love these classrooms. For them to, like, break away and go to the principal and be like, hey, yo. You got to watch out. <laughs> you got to watch out. He's in a violent oh, mood. Stop it. He's in a violent mood today. I can only imagine the response. Right. Yeah, oh, kinda, stop a it. A little bit. He's six. He's a little six. bit. A little bit. You know, and it's like, oh, he's six, but. <laughs> and that's the simplicity of a firearm, though. That yeah. is the simplicity of it. That, like we said, <laughs> our forefathers didn't think about that it would get. This advance and this simple. That is sick. Because back then, they'd be like, like what, six, how many, how many you six got, year olds, man, you carry How many six-year-olds is doing sack. that? How would they even have, like, the actual, like, <laughs> the facilities or even have the actual, like, the utilities to even be able Come to do on. this? Um, and it's just an overall bad situation. Because, again, this bad. goes back to the larger issue I think I have is that in this country, at one point, I thought one of the safest places I could enter every day was my school. I, I I personally thought that. I, I it was never a time. I mean, we went to school. We went to school together, like damn near K through twelve. Yeah, uh, I, I've never you thought there was never that. a time, even after Columbine, which happened while we were still in school, in, school, in public school. But it kind of sure. felt like, oh God, that was wild. Like that was a one off. What? That was crazy. Some angry kids. Then the whole documentary was made and. I never but then, <laughs> but then took off, took off. It, it did it take off or did we start paying attention? 
I think I think it took off to a point where we paid a lot of attention to it, and these stories were always when they popped up were cr- like they became something that was huge. Everybody was focused. CNN, because whatever. It's the children. Yeah, it was it was it's on. But now I feel like we just kind of move on a little bit and wait for the next one. Like now it doesn't feel like these don't. And I I, I personally I'm not saying that I personally feel that I do try to have like a a visceral reaction to when like when anything happens inside the school walls that affect the children of the nation that we live in. Because again, one thing I think a nation should be able to do is like, you know, protect the little people that walk around these places. Like Forget about the little, our future. Our future, right. That is yes. our future. That is America's future. But those are defense, I mean, outside this little boy, because he got the frigging, he got, like, he might not be defenseless. <laughs> but I mean, I, most of these kids is defense, like they not out here, they don't have a way to protect themselves against anybody coming into their school and massacring them. Um, and it's, I think where I always stand is like, yo, going back to access, I want to so, give, I want to give tax credits to anybody who want to give a safe. That's if it. you want to get this safe, yo, we're going to send you some bread. Send and I know pe- that sounds, send you some bread. And, and the thing that is, seems easy. You could, man, <laughs> the amount of money that's spent lobbying for, that's well, we know, to go yeah. Go against safety yeah. and to go against protecting our children. If they would spend a quarter of that to partner with some of these manufacturers to say, "Hey, look, we're trying to create vouchers, so that if someone gives us proof of purchase of a safe, and then you know they can even so two hundred dollars off your next Glock, right? Your next Smith and Wesson, because we know you gonna you, hang it you up got in a here. Safe. You, you, you gonna hang it up. You the next thing you buy, you gonna hang it you in. You gonna put zip. it somewhere safe. Oh, wait. Away. Away. <laughs> Just get it away. This is an interesting point you bring there where it's like, all right, we know that a lot of a lot of the lobbying is like, yo, because one thing you can do is you can say, hey, they're trying to take, they're trying to prevent oh, you. Yeah. Because when you say that, that brings fear, and then people yep. want to go buy more. When people are afraid, they're going to go buy more. And even past that, I, it seems to me like being adjacent to this community, um, similar to like tattoos and other things, when people get one, they want to get more. I mean, See? yes and no. Yes and no. Yes okay. and no. Okay. Yes, there is a there is an itch, there is okay. an addiction, but no, because it's less permanence with a firearm. I have two tattoos. It was eighteen, nineteen, and then by twenty, I said, "Man, I'm not doing no more." <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not doing it's no it. more. Okay, right. And they're, you know they're pretty large, but it's still like I'm not doing no, that no more. Oh, right. But with firearms, yeah. I get an itch and I scratch it, man. Oh. But what I have done is say, okay, every firearm I have has a different application. Right. And that's the way I want to forge my collection. I don't have duplicates. I don't see the reason in having duplicates. So people who have five different four or five inch barrel nine millimeter pistols, what what why? <laughs> why? It's a good uh, question. Uh, I don't know. What's the, what's the application? The application is they have the same application. So for me, it becomes, okay, if I want to get another micro compact or something small, I'm going to trade in. I'm going to sell a gun back mm. and then have that make the price of the new firearm a little cheaper. And so that's the way I go about it. But some people, to your point, I think it's the fear. It's the fear of losing their rights to bear arms. Which causes people to run and buy bulk ammo and store it. To buy bulk magazines and load them and store them. To buy multiple AR-15s so that they can arm a small militia. What? Well, you know they're gonna stop. They're gonna stop the government when the government come to take everything. Oh they gonna, yeah, <laughs> they gonna, yeah. They gonna really do that. They yeah. gonna, <laughs> man. They gonna stop something. the government, right? The There's government. This. <laughs> the government wants something. They don't have to knock on your door. <laughs> right. It can be a drone. It can be right. a drone, okay? It can be somebody just playing a little video game. And they're going to... That, that, it's, no, it's, no, it's no rational way of thinking to think you're hoarding and collecting firearms because you're afraid of the government coming for you. I don't think that's a rational thing. Yeah, I don't think that's a rational fear. People talk about a race war. I don't think that's a rational fear. 
Yeah. D- 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 as to be of a reason to like to, 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 yeah. to, to bulk bulk up. And especially when a lot of the folks was doing it's like y'all are already like the privileged ones. Like we know yeah. like you guys yeah. are already on to like yeah. what do you think we because that's the and that, but see this is where it gets for me to where where are you putting your funds? Where are you investing your money? Well, this is a good you, point too. Where you got that much? Where, where some of these weapons, three, three to five thousand dollars, firearms, the wealth and gap, gear, the, and all this stuff. And you mean to the tell wealth me, gap is financing this? People got so much on, bread man. that they can. Come on, man. White you, folks got so much bread they can just go buy. A, just go buy a three thousand dollar gun, <laughs> and then put all the fixes on it, make it about forty five. Come on, and that's where it's like you have to do better for yourself. A little bit, right? <laughs> Where are you putting your money? Where are you putting your energy? Where are you putting your time? And you're not putting it into protecting yourself or those around you. You're putting it into a falsehood of protection, which is I have this weapon, but who can get to it easily? My children. Ah, and yeah. then now who are you protecting? You bought it to protect your family, but now you put your family in harm's way by sheer buzzword negligence. Mm. Negligence is the root to half of this stuff because when you have instances or you have history of mental health issues, how can you just walk into a gun shop and walk out and you have everything you need to go right down the street and lose your mind? Right. I There's, there's not many things in this society that, like, we think, like, another thing that is – not as dangerous as guns, but still pretty dangerous. It's like driving a car. Like, car can go and you can run people over with this. There's a lot of things that can go wrong we, yeah. in this 3,000, yeah. pe- like, 3,000, like, the t- two, two ton, two ton, two ton, 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 ton killer right? machine. Two ton killer machine, right? Um, but there's, there's, you got to go to class. You got to have hours. You got to carry a permit for X amount of years. You got to have supervisors in your car. You can't drive at night. Then you got to go take an actual test after you pay for driving school. And then you got to pass that driving test. If you fail it twice, then you got to go back, take more. Come on, man. That's to get in that car. To get a gun, you walk in and walk out? Yeah. And I think even in, even in states, right, because states make their driving laws, but even in states where there are looser driving laws, I feel like you still gotta like show up and go somewhere and get the license. Yeah. You, like every, yeah. there's nowhere I know Everybody that you can just go get the car with no test, license. This you, just, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get behind the wheel and show us that you know how to operate. If I'm this wrong, someone come correct me on this, but I don't think there's anywhere in this United States of America where you don't have to go do so, like you gotta go physically go get a license yes. to go like get a car and, and you drive have to somewhere prove. and prove that you can drive. And you this can vehicle. drive the car because there's a no lot. state is just giving you a written test saying here you go. <laughs> No, because there's a lot of cars out here. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of cars out here. A lot of firearms out here. Exactly there's right. A lot of cars. There's a lot of cars, <laughs> and there's a lot of. <laughs> that I'm just saying, right? There's a lot of them out here, and we want to make sure that if we have a bunch of these cars out here, that everybody's kind of following similar rules. Similar like similar rules. There's similar. Like we know this. Green means go. Red means stop. And we all agree. Yeah. That yellow, green means that yellow, go. Yellow. Everybody kind of yeah, picks and chooses. That's a loose rule. That's a loose rule. I don't know. All it right. Means speed up. It means slow so down. That's... And it means look left, right. I don't know. All right. Yellow means to everybody. <laughs> to everybody. But that green and that red. Go and stop. Go and stop. Because again, there's a lot of these cars out here, and we want to make sure that with all these cars out here, because yeah, we know they can be a little dangerous at times. That you know we're just following different uh, procedures. Yeah, a little bit. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And I, I, I will never, I will never be able to understand it. To be honest, I mean, even an advocate, but I'm not an advocate for just everybody needs one. Everybody should be able to have one, because also, like I've started by saying, it's a privilege. Right. It's not a right. It's yeah. not a right. And it's definitely not a right to be able to walk around <laughs> with a firearm <laughs> under your clothes. <laughs> Hidden so from no, the world. So no one knows. So no one knows. <laughs> that when you go to a different state, oh, man, you got a driver's license? Yeah, you can put it under your clothes. Huh? Wait. So we don't know who got them? And, okay. And, okay. like, back to, like, the drugs and alcohol piece of it, like you were mentioning earlier, like, all fair, it was like, yo, certain places you could be at a bar with it hidden. <laughs> with concealed firearm loaded hot under your clothes at the bar taking shots with your best friend because what could go wrong because what can go wrong (laughs) 
<laughs> you know that, and that's why carry laws they differ state to state. Yeah, some say okay. So if I'm carrying, I go into a foreign state, a neighboring state, and I enter that state without declaring that I'm entering your state with the firearm. That's illegal, but that's not this. That's not the law for every state. Right. So if I do a road trip, and I'm carrying, because it could be a road trip, go through multiple states. You on interstate here, highways, motels, hotels, holidays, anything. <laughs> you might need it. But the fact of going through all those states, laws change, and you can pretty much incriminate yourself without knowing. That's an issue on it in itself. Which I wonder, though, that starts to go into, like, a federal standard, which I think that freaks everybody. Like, for me, I feel like that's common sense. But I feel like when I start saying, like, hey, is there, like, what is the common sense gun laws? Common sense ain't common. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that freaks everybody out. We're like, what do you mean the government's going to make a law across the land for these things? And it's like... Yo, I feel like, again, because like cars, there's a lot of them out here. Uh, the ATF <laughs> tries. Yeah. The ATF tries. They laws them, them, them things. They, they, but then, for me, it's like, that's an agency, and can agencies be making, like, because then that's what someone else bango. is going to come. Someone's going to come to me and be like, well, you mean the agencies are going to make these laws? law making arm of, of the government. Of the government, right? You, 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 can't, you can't make a law. You can make a rule. And that's what they do. They make rules. Yeah. Like I said, they don't say no. They just make it a little tougher. That's what the ATF is doing. They make things a little tougher, which some people don't agree with. Right. Some people do. As recent as, you know, the new laws with the brace, pistol brace law, where basically overnight, Similar to the bump stock, but the bump stock made a semi-auto weapon, a semi-automatic weapon, <laughs> automatic. Which now, is I anybody who disagrees with the ATF saying, "Look, man, we got to get rid of bump stocks." That that teeters into that lane of you're an extremist for me. Because you, why why you, should why? you be able to take something that's not something and turn it into that? You have machined a weapon. Yeah. Now you need to let the government know I have machined a weapon, but then, then you get into the ghost guns and people saying, oh, I should be able to. The government doesn't need to know everything I have. Because I'm technically <laughs> building. What are you afraid of? Yeah. <laughs> like When people say the government doesn't need to know everything I have, what are you, the person who says that, afraid of? Right. What do you do for a living? It's always my next question. Because what, what are you afraid of? You afraid they're going to kick in your door? You think the ATF got you on a watch list? And if they do, why? Why do you think that? <laughs> You know, what are you doing? And look, for me, I lean towards people in the privacy of their own homes. Like, I always lean towards that. And if people want to, but where it differs for me always kind of is that, yo, when you take something that can, like, now, like, take another person's life yeah. very quickly, too. It's not like with ease. Because, like, we always say, like, again, like, you might talk to these other countries and not say that like violence is happening, but someone might pull out a knife and he might get like two folks, but then like 14 other people gonna get this man about yes. the way. Yes. Shovel over the head. What? Yeah. <laughs> Some, he's gonna Somebody get, gonna grab a stick, man. And he, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but usually what happens in some of these, like, these, like, if someone has a gun or in this corner, you say an automatic weapon, it might be one person and we might have easily then lost 25 easy, quick. Easily. Easily, quick. And like, it's just. So th that's what that's where the difference for me is. Is like not to say it's not going to stop violence. I don't think that's no. But we're just saying like, yo, they might not kill as many people. You'll never be able to stop deviant behavior. No, yeah, exactly. That's they, just we're humans. We're too complex for that. Yeah, exactly. Deviant so. behavior is going to exist as long as human beings exist. But <laughs> you can put some. <laughs> Some hurdles in the way. Yeah. You can put some hurdles in the way. So they trip over a few you things trip, before. And then you go, like, oh, he was about to shoot us. Yes. Jail that fool. <laughs> right? Get him out of here. You know? <laughs> Get him out of here, right? Just some, like, there you go, like, yeah, hurdles. Just a little, yeah, just a little hurdle. Just a couple of hurdles. It's, again, even then, some people going to jump the hurdles. They that's going to happen. That's going yeah, to still through happen. Um, but... Every now and then the hurdles might stop somebody. Will, man, not might. A they, lot of the they times. They will. They will. And I say that because even having a stringent process discourages people. Damn. Just to be like, oh, that's what it requires? 
man, I'm not even going to try. Cool. Because you had to think twice. You had to say, well, I do got that felony. I do this. I do that. I do this. And, oh, they do background checks? They going to call people? They need <laughs> references? <laughs> oh, no, nah, man. I don't know who I'm going to tell them. They can call and say, can we give this man a gun? You put any of those kind of stop gaps in the way, you will make this it can make this country way safer. So we got negligence, so we talking safes. You get safes, you do background checks. And the thing that kills me is that the majority of Americans won't. Uh, yeah, there we go. And that ain't right. That's the that's the, the biggest majority one. Of Americans. Because gun no. owners or not, because there's a vast majority gun owners and firearm owners who are like me, responsible. Yeah. They 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 take care of their weapons. They they honestly there's some people who buy them, load them, shoot them, don't know how to store them, don't know if they're supposed to clean them. It's like you don't have a cleaning kit. Right. You wait, I need to clean this? Oh boy. Do you change the oil in your car? I gotta change the oil in my car? Huh? So it's just Little things, man. Little things. Well, and 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 here's where to your where the lane you're going down there is like being almost like an educated gun owner about what you've now purchased. Yes. Because what you've purchased is again sense a killing machine. Like that. I mean, it could be for like it, at the end of the day, it could easily be that. Like it, if, if you point it at somebody, it could kill them. Hey, let's let's just it, it it is what it is. Right. It and is what it is. So I so. My so weapon thing, of destruction. Weapon of destruction, right. I've always thought, and this again, people think I'm crazy around this, is that, yo, if this country is going to be hell-bent on, we're going to have guns everywhere, start showing people everybody how to use these things from yeah. early on. And, yeah. like, and like, it I know. It used to be a part of high school curriculum. Was like that ROTC ed. and all them things? Was no, they, not just even like that? driver's ed. Oh. It, was, it, w- it would have been a subject in physical education. Mm. Firearms. And I get Throughout various times in the history, especially after slavery, white folks would be like, "What you mean we gonna be out here training black people how to use guns in school?" <laughs> I, so, which we know that's a, and that's a part yeah. of this as well. And like, because again, when anybody ever comes to me and's like, "Yo, um, like, you you're pro gun," this time I'm like, "Hold on, you did know, you not you know do my you not, phrase?" And I'd be like, "Do you do you not know how this whole thing kind of went down?" And like, like we had to like folks in this country, like black folks in this country, ran across the line to pick up guns to save this country, right? And then you think we're just going to be chilling around here without any way to protect ourselves? Like, again, no one, there's a, there's a set of this, there's a set of folks in this country who made the rules. Some of us trying to follow them. Try. Trying some to follow try. them. Again, some folks are just trying to rip the rules to shreds and or not have any rules at all, which. We know what that leads to. We know what that leads to. So Anarchy. Anarchy, exactly. Um, that was a heavy ass uh, segment. Probably one of the heaviest segments we did some time on this. Uh, it was <laughs> heavy, <laughs> it was heavy. but hopefully it was educational, and you know, hopefully people were like again going back to this story, a six year old again, just being very specific and very like pointed about what I'm saying. A six year old going in and shooting uh, their teacher is kind. It's not kind of insane. It is insane, Completely. and we can't have a country obviously that. Uh, like just allows that to happen, but I think this is a this is a specific incident. But it's not it's not isolated. There, this that's, happens. That, see, that's what I was gonna say. As you said, we can't get used to. We can't normalize this. Yeah, we can't. You, you, if something happens on Monday, we're over it by Tuesday night. Yeah. So can't normalize. Really a, 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 a tough situation, but I, I I'm thankful again to have have you on I, again to just put some like again. <laughs> background around like just ownership of guns and what that can look like. And I feel like that's a message that if we could take out to like the masses, because we know a lot of folks kind of like they agree with like, no one wants their country to be like the place where kids get shot at school. Yeah. Like, no, I don't think anybody wakes up every morning. is like, that's what I want to stand on. Um, so, I mean, hopefully we get there. Uh, hopefully we get there, but Brian, I feel like it's time to take a break. Yeah, will take a break. So, um, again, you're tuned in to a show, um, <laughs> the only show. show right now on uh, Beltway Radio and Beyond. We'll be back. Sweeps! The sharing of biased and false, false news has become all too common on social media. media. 
We go live to Los Angeles with Pause One. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. This is fake news like the president says. How they introduce me. Meth and let it spread on the res. No prior reservation, getting head from a les. And these feds, cold as ice out, headed for feds. Damn. Justice ain't blind, it's bias. Classify us as a menace. Hit with a sentence and gentrify us. Colonize the neighborhood, but we ain't staying quiet, though. Voices a reminder of the 92 riots, so come and try us. We're looting and putting food in homes. Still a new computers, revenge for the student loans. Feel threatened yet? Bitches, it's a scary world. Happen to rap like a rated caps on my jerry curl. So much attitude, iced tea, add a cube, add a boy. Ever since I touched the mic, I had him glued. You hear the booze, haters throwing sodium, unloading all the dirt. They'll try to kill me at the podium. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. You don't want to hear the facts. Hispanics and blacks, poor and white, stripped of their rights. Locked up in Supermax You like the dudes in rap Posing with a group of rats Using trap music Faces full of stupid tats Do relax The camera's off You could lose an act It doesn't match Not the color or the gang signs Falling out your high heels Claiming that you bang nines I ain't here to change minds Just a fin These thugs are transgender men Blending with the strange times Seen a lot of scams Cops with the body cams Roll by slow Profiling the whole block And no wonder when they throw on their lights We don't don't stop, look, I don't give a fuck about the bullshit you read on it. They shoot us in the back, there's no front page spread on it. You don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news, you don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news, you don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news, you don't want what I say to be true. If I was you, I'd probably be afraid of me too. I'm bad news. Welcome back to uh, a show on Beltway Radio and Beyond. Um, this is your boy Cortez. Big Yay. Big Yay is here with me. Um, we created a different show from the show you usually hear at 9.30 on Thursday night, which is Chip Chat, which I participate in. Um, and now we have a different show on. But we have similar graphics that fly around because, you know... <laughs> Because, you know, again, there's no preparation on my end here that happens, and why would we change the graphics when Chip will be back next week? Um, <laughs> so will I, I think. Maybe. We'll see. Hopefully. Or maybe it'll be a new show. Maybe me and you have a show on this after. Oh, boy. Uh, no, who knows? Who knows? That's I, Again, I started on this network as a guest. So Yeah. yeah. yeah from there. Um, the next story that, like, I, I kind of found a little hilarious, and, like, us both being uh, fathers that I thought we'd just throw in here, um, it's something that ha happened. Uh, it was a prank. Um, so a Belgian man pulled off a prank of a lifetime. Some were saying, <laughs> when he, some were saying, <laughs> some were saying, exactly. uh, he then when he faked his own death and he showed up to his funeral by stepping off a helicopter instead of being carried out of a hearse. Uh, this oh. is TikTok, a TikToker. This is hilarious. Um, David, uh, I would say veteran. Uh, along with his <laughs> wife and children, uh, they uh, decided to orchestrate, a, uh, I guess this is a pseudo suicide. Is it a suicide, I guess? Is they're saying to prank loved ones and see who actually cared about the 45 year old? To spread the nudes of uh, Batron's death, one of his children took to social media and wrote a tribute to her father. So this is a family affair. Terrible. Uh, rest he then in arrived peace, Daddy. At the ceremony in a helicopter. Uh, and quote, the daughter wrote, according to the Times of uh, UK, quote, why is life so unfair? These aren't even like, do people really say this when the people's there? Um, why you? You were going to be a grandfather. Damn, and you still had the whole life, you had your whole life ahead of you. I love you. We love you. 
We'll, we'll never forget you, end quote. The fake funeral, which was held near the city of, I guess, Leech, I hope I pronounced that right, last weekend was attended uh, by dozens of friends, family members dressed in black, waiting for a ceremony to begin until they were met with a landing helicopter. Um, I... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, I uh, I guess a couple questions I was... Is Man, like, set your ass down. Uh, superbly placed. <laughs> superbly placed. Um, okay? Um, bro, yeah. I'll let you have the front this first. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so for me, it, it, as you said, it's a family affair. Your children <laughs> think this funny? Your children think this funny. What kind of twisted family is this to begin with? To where your children are writing things like this. Online. Online. Not in, not in, well, I mean, you couldn't put it in your journal because no one it reads it. It sounds like a prayer. Why? <laughs> Why? You putting that on the internet? Like, it just, it's too much. The man is clearly disturbed. And I say that based on the influence of social media. He has been dis it mutated by social media in, in the attempt to get followers. Like, what, what world have we entered where... Oh, wait, hold on. What's the word? Um, 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 clout? Clout, yeah. Clout. Clout. <laughs> At first, I thought... Clout is fake. Uh, uh, right. Well, no, is it? I mean, but, like, is, if, if clout is a form of currency, right, and so is, like, a pa is paper money, like, isn't it what we put value on, right? Yeah, but see, that's what I'm getting at. Exactly. And so we put value exactly. on this. Like, he was... We described my man, uh, David Bethren... Uh, as I don't, I don't know. Um, we described him as a TikToker. A TikToker, exactly. Um, I, I, I guess yeah. exactly. I mean, no, and, but again, no, the media described him that. That's fair. Yes, you I'm gotta a, remember yes. that because they felt like there's no way in the world that because pretty much you saw this on TikTok, and that's the thing. This is like this. Tick, he, he was just a normal dude who did a stupid prank. On his own family and friends. <laughs> with his family. With his, with with his family immediate and family. And to the point where it's like, it's just displayed on, on a social media site. So again, to make everything seem, you know, how do we describe this dude? That's well, fair. They, well, they said TikToker and they said the, 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 the images that we're constantly seeing mm -hmm. were recorded by a fellow TikToker. Right. So he has TikTokers there. It's a syndicate. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> all the like TikTokers it. are in a c conglomeration. Yeah. Okay, so it's they come into their man's right now. This is the oldest show ever. Right they now, they come into their man's funeral. Yeah, <laughs> because they fellow TikTokers. Right, and so they recording, and he's a TikToker, and people there, and you trying to say, oh, it's because people don't reach out to me. You don't know right. what tomorrow is promised. Blah. Blah, that is blah. see that that's yes. that's what upset me. Blah. That, that, part, that, that's that right. whole thing is like that's the okay. Bullshit. I mean, you w what 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 do you want? One, I don't. He didn't show up until until the helicopter came, so you don't know what was said unless you're again based off of your your wife and kids were listening. Right. But well, someone still, was obviously TikToking it. They, he was getting a live stream. Yeah, somebody. <laughs> so my, somebody. my, like, probably. But my thing is like, look, are 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 you like you said looking for clout or trying to be a Bond villain? Because it makes no <laughs> damn That's sense. A, yes. Because mind you, he, he did everything <laughs> elaborate villain. like a Bond villain. You know, I mean, he's like faked his own death, comes back from the death group using a helicopter. A helicopter. I though. mean, come on. And then you had your kids. <laughs> Setting out a uh, uh, booby traps and breadcrumbs. <laughs> like what? I mean, shoot, that all, is a Bondville. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. We, we're all taking off a lot of the check boxes on that one. I yeah. mean, you, you have the what the the villainous girlfriend and all that shit who probably dead in a matter of minutes. You know, later on, and you wouldn't even get it. Yes, self indulgent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. He, I, he a Bond villain. I. Here's my thing. And a foreign country. I was about to say, yeah. I, 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 you hear yeah. foreign yeah. I said, and he's foreign. Um, you know he got an accent. You so, know he got an accent. All right. So, yes. <laughs> you believed me. Yo. Come on, man. Here's a, here's my thing as well, too. Like, let's just say you trying to, like, let's just say you trying to prove, a, like, a point or make a lesson learned to your kids. Is this is death what we really playing around with? At like, all. yo, At all. is this the one we playing with? Like, I'm, this for me means 
he doesn't really respect life. Yeah, to play with it, right? To play. Like, that's like if you call out from work and you say that, like, someone died someone in your died family. Someone died in your family. You tripping. You don't you tripping. respect life. You tripping. You don't respect life. Or death. Or death, right. You don't respect the completion of life. Because when you die, you you completed life. Yeah, exactly. You completed yeah, life. Definitely. Full on, full, full on agree with that. You know, it, it, so you don't, he don't respect life. He don't respect the dead. Um. It, yeah, now, sad. wild ass story, wild ass story. I, I mean, yeah, like... Clout, clout, like, clout, yeah. yo, like, he's got 60,000 clout coins. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's surpassed everybody. Oh, he hit the jackpot. TikTokers. Uh, yo, like, so, but also, too, I'm also on a show every Thursday at 930 that, you know, we like our likes around here, too, don't we? And when I say we, that's the proverbial we. I don't know. That's hey. not another person isn't here this evening, but, you know. Yeah, shout out to Chip. Y'all don't fake your death every Thursday. We don't. For likes. We don't. Okay. We do not do that. That is yeah, fair. Uh, yeah. We do not do that. <laughs> um. All right, well, give me boys. What's the, what's three uh, what's three minutes? Not to take too much time on this because obviously the finals happen. This isn't a full on sports show here, but how you feel uh, about the finals? How you feel about the finals? Finals were um, what stage, man? What round? The last the last series? Yeah, just like the NBA, the fi- like not the playoffs because the playoffs is in general wild. Talking about that loaf of bread, the immovable, highly skilled loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, he's good. That jumped two inches. Yeah. And you be like, that ain't going in. How did that go in? Swish. Swish. Bottom of the net. Water polo tosses. Hey. You see them passes? They water polo passes. Ball come here, he just like that. And it's gone. It's gone. And it's gone. It's like, oh, shit. I know folks didn't really enjoy this finals. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I last, didn't even watch Game 5. See, that's what's wrong. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, Yo, no. That's I, what's wrong. I started watching Game 5. I don't like sloppy basketball. And that's why I don't watch NCAA. I don't like <laughs> to see... The degradation that, that, of my game. That la- the final that, that last game. That last was not game good. was trash. That was not good. I was watching it like, oh, I can't watch this bad man. This is not. It was a lot of missed shots. Jokic um, gonna win. He gonna get MVP, and I'm turning this off. Yeah, I. I mean, I think we knew like, and barring like Jimmy Butler doing something insane again, that boy's ankle was mush. Yeah, yeah. So exactly, and what we're watching that happens in Denver. Uh, Jokic is this? In, it's insane, and I'm just it, one of these times. How I felt about LeBron, how I felt about Steph, how I'm gonna feel about uh, Jokic is that, yo, I'm just gonna enjoy this now. Like, actually, I mean, because he's gonna be on some more marquee games next year. I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't out chance. here catching these damn Denver games like that. It's on the West Coast, no. hard to catch a lot of those games. But the, he's been good for some time. It's not it, like this is not a surprise. It's to not anyone. a surprise. If you're it an shouldn't NBA be a surprise. Fan, yeah, you know, Jokic is the truth. Right. You know. You know he is. You know he the truth. Like I'm not saying he's not the truth. He's still a loaf of bread. Yeah, he's a loaf. Yeah, he's a. I, I but again, I, I, but let's 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 fully be honest here. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So, as you said, it was not watchable because of the fact. The simple fact is like one, it's on ESPN because their coverage is yeah, shit. ABC is no. Yeah, good. no, not ABC. ESPN. ESPN on ABC. Okay. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Mickey, Mouse, Mickey Mouse owned it all. Yes. Mickey owns it all. He owns it all. So um, their viewpoint is we don't have LeBron, so we can't overhype him anymore. Right. We right. don't have Steph Curry, can't overhype him anymore. Right. Um, Milwaukee's gone. Philadelphia had his chance, but fucked up. Boston's so gone. Boston's gone, and that could have been some great, great yeah. drama there the with the own, yeah, and all that stuff. So. For them, it's like, okay, we're left with these two. That's how they treated it. That, an eight that, seed. That, that, an eight that, seed. And, huh. but, and the thing is, is that has been, that I, I've said this to you before, is like when it comes to uh, a network that's supposed to broadcast the entire league that yeah. they're presenting, yeah. but they only want to present premier teams. Yep. And that's or in this case, how legacy did, teams. Because here's my question: is and well, that is the point, though? Legacy, yeah. legacy teams, yeah. Because that's because like similar to the same movies coming out over and over right. again. That's what people want to gravitate. Because my thing is, where's like the trip? That maybe they had these, and I just don't watch that deep into. Like, I just watch the games. But was there like you know when they do like the trip back to Serbia, selling the story, mm-hmm. like where he came see, from, see, uh, with uh, the farmhouse or whatever? I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just like usually they do these like. Long form type things mm-hmm. to to bring people into this. Jokic, not doing it. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, as we saw at the as end. As we saw, as we he saw, he was at the asked. End. Mm-hmm. So what you gonna do? 
go home. <laughs> I what, felt so that. Are you going I to felt the parade? So, uh, when is the parade? <laughs> Thursday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What? You mean to tell me you don't even want to go to the parade? He want to because he did his job. He's ready, to go, he's ready to go home. That's yeah, it's like I won championship. Me go home. That's yeah, it. Like, I'm, no, I'm but, but again, again, the the thing is, the other thing is, like when the NBA was on NBC, they made it personal. They did they, do they, that. They, they built they built rivalries. You saw. I mean, even when the, when it was like Indiana got into the finals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they made them interesting they because did. not not the simple fact that Reggie Miller was there, but it's somehow they just made it interesting for us to watch it. When the Nets got into those two finals, same thing. We figured it's like, oh, they can't be good that first time. <laughs> Second time, it's yeah. like, okay, they may have a chance. Yeah, they made again how they presented them made them interesting. But in this case scenario, ESPN was looking for, oh, LeBron's coming back. Oh. Oh, Steph Curry might have it. Nope. Nope. That's how they treat it. And it's like once they once they don't have some the, those key. premier teams that yeah. they want to feature, they're done. And, and and that's how they presented it. And I feel like, unfortunately, from this point on, I don't know how long that damn contract is, but it sucks. I Someone ne- has to be able but like then but then even I don't want to go too deep. Wait for the TV schedule for next year. Yeah, just yeah, he's going to be, no, just no, he's going to be I mean, everywhere. mind you, yes, they'll, they'll, hype next up, year. they'll hype up, but yep. here's, the, here's how the hype up will be. Denver will be on a Christmas game, but it will probably be, A, the late night, very late night. It will not be in the, the prime time, for your time frame but between, let's say, 3.30 or No, or I eight. think that if, you, if you're smart, you put them against the Knicks. You put him in Madison yeah, Square Garden that's the thing. at 12 that's o'clock the thing. on Christmas. 12. But you put him at 12 o'clock on Christmas and sell but, that. But no, no, that's 12, the sad that's part because the Knicks ain't watchable. <laughs> Knicks are okay this year. I, the Knicks are the Knicks. They are. But that's what I'm saying. Let <laughs> him Knicks, go in there. The Knicks, Knicks. Let him put up, <laughs> let him put up 45 Twenty and ten on the that Knicks team. On, on the Garden, yeah, yeah, at the Garden, yeah, yeah. that might be the one. Like if I was gonna go ahead, I and mean to be honest, not the Knicks. You want him against Andrew Tacumpo or Boston? Yes. Yeah. You need to see him against some long, lanky, big boys. Yes. Yeah, that's not a bad one. I want, I want, I want Bucks. Bucks I want, is I want a good to see one. what Andrew Tacumpo gonna do with him. Three thirty game. Oh. It's, uh, at, oh. The three thirty game on that one, I wouldn't yeah. be mad at that either. You had your little snacks. You got your food. Now, okay, now yeah. it's time to watch uh, these big boys bang. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, again, I don't find him. I, I see him as one of the great basketball players I've ever watched. No doubt. So I just want to enjoy this. I feel like a lot of times, like the, the game is built on a lot of like the storylines as we just were talking about. But like now this is kind of moved online. He's not really an online player, like He's a not. marketable, like social media type player. It doesn't feel like, I don't see him, like everybody seems to be in like, the, everybody's all agreeing on what his performances are on, online, where it's usually more banter between two no, opposing sides. Shit. Everybody's like, we don't like this. But then it's also like, well, then, then there is two sides. Because we don't like this, but then it's like, man, that boy cold. Yeah, that's where I'm at with that it. Boy I, cold. I, don't even, I, I, I like it. I like I, If anybody I, cold. I just like that he cold. I like that he cold. Like, it, it might be an effortless game, and there's like a lack of passion going on there. But I respect it. Like, you got to respect that man's game. Yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I got, and period. I respect it. I enjoy it. Yo, shout outs to them for winning the NBA Finals. But now ESPN and ABC going to respect it. Yeah, that is the truth. They yeah. going to respect it. Yeah. They yeah. Gonna well, get that well, yeah wait for, again, wait for that TV schedule and see how, yeah, many, how, many, ga- see how many games ESPN is going to televise Denver, Denver and how many tele- games are going to feature the, either the Lakers or, or the Warriors. No, yeah. I right, trust and believe there'll be will be more than than you will expect. He's the NBA Finals. You should be featuring the NBA for the champions. He's going around Even playing the Kings. people in prime time. The Kings, Kings will be sleeper on. team. Kings will be on. I think the Kings will be. You on. know, West Coast team. Because you should be sleepers. bringing people into. Yes. It's hard. Like it's hard for us. And I know East Coast bias, but it's hard for us to stay awake. Okay. At this old age. At this yeah. This this big age. At this big age. At yeah. this big age. Uh, it's hard to stay this awake big sometimes. Age. You know, you just end up watching what is it, Charmed or whatever the hell it is, Bruh. Whatever that is, and you wake up the next nah, morning. I wake up. I wake up to uh, to Shaq. Oh, it's a replaying I, bro, again. I wake up to them. Oh, I you get. Oh, wait. Get you wake up. up. Like, oh. oh, they're in the pregame. Okay, the, the right, post game. game excuse me, post game. Hopefully, some interviews come up, and you can catch where it's yeah, at. Yeah, can catch those silly interviews. All right, we're going. We're going to go ahead and uh, this. We're going to end the show out with you know just something that came up in conversation between me and Chloe um, earlier today. And I was just talking about 
you know, back in the day, when it came to like cell phones in like the early 2000s, there was like so many different, like a lot of different phones. <laughs> Everybody had like Yoke the phone. probably got a phone from back then. He probably do, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, there were so many different options, and it felt like just a different time, like more of like a wild, wild west. I think now, most of the time, it's going to be like folks going to have iPhone, folks going to have Android. Yeah, sure. But it, it, at, a, at a different time, it felt like there was a lot more different brands out here. Yeah. Like folks had different things that were yeah. like in like multiple people enjoyed, but like you might be like, nah, I rock with this specific yeah. brand. Obviously, the carriers are gonna be the carriers. They were still running shit, um, but yeah. yeah, I don't. I felt like this is that's changed now. Yeah. Um, well, it's changed due to consolidation. Yes. Yeah. yeah it, it, and, and in COVID, the great expediter got everything moving quicker. Boy, did it. So yeah, we don't we don't have as many choices. Um, but for me, I I felt like I had a top five. Oh boy. For me, in the two oh thousands. Oh boy. Of like phones that like I thought they like in the early two thousands they was the shit. That's okay, why. I, okay, hold all on, right, hold, hold on, on, yeah, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'm gonna try to guess. Let me just see what's on the list. So I know, I know, cause I remember vividly you. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I remember you and one Jesse and okay. y'all phones and y'all was y'all y'all was them phone men. Yeah, I'm telling you. So <laughs> Sidekick is on this list. Where is it on this list? That's a question. Okay. <laughs> um, the bloop bloop, 930's on this list. Ooh. Oh, oh no. yeah. And yeah. then do you remember the times of silent? Like, because you could turn off a cell phone, but you can't turn off that walkie. So that Didn't thing, it vibrate? Whoop. Oh, no. It had, the, it had the little, the little, the, 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 that's what yeah. it was. And the, you semi-chirp. Semi chirp. Semi -chirp. <laughs> For folks, all right, just to bring folks into this, like what we're talking about right now. Cause <laughs> oh, yeah, we old. Because some people might look and listen and be like, what do they mean phones is chirping? There was old, on Nextel, which was a provider at one time, um, where we had more <laughs> cell phone providers than we yes. do now. Because um, I think we're down to three. Oh, well, no, we got those other ones now that are oh kind. Oh, God. But we're down to three, but then they yeah. got those other ones that use the t cell towers. They, I was going to say, um, they paying those three. Those three, right. Um, but Nextel had a feature on the phones where it was walkie talkie. And the reason that was so big is because this is coming from a time where you had to pay per minute yeah. to talk. Yeah. You had to pay per text. So a walkie talkie feature was like, oh, I could talk to my people all day without my mom getting mad that I'm running the bill up. Yes. So that changed the game. And for my first, what I remember about Nextel specifically was for me, when I first saw that phone, it was that yellow and black one, the construction phone yes. with no, with yes. no cup, with nothing on the yes. front. Yeah, exactly. Ryan's laughing. Yes. He, it, good, it, it just hit you in your it head right like, there. It was it like had that no joke. screen, no LCD no. on the front. It was made by Cat. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. That thing was ready, baby. It was ready. <laughs> that was, that was that was, that was that was a few that was a fusion, okay? Yo, that's tell me, cat. That phone was in the. It might as well be that. It might as well be a, so it was serious. a caterpillar <laughs> product. Yes, you're right because it was yellow and black. It was built. It, it might as well have been an OtterBox phone, and it had it, and it had texture. It was like yes, rubberized, it rubberized, so it size. wouldn't fall out your hand. Bro, they 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 was thinking it was crazy. Next cell was ahead of the and game. And next cell was one of those. Um, I never personally was on the BlackBerry train. I had a BlackBerry at one time. I had time. a trio. Oh, that was, yeah, the, the palm. Windows. Yeah, the, the palm, 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 trio, palm. Windows base. I Windows had a, base, I had yes. A trio. And it had the little small the antenna little small, at the top. It's little tiny and, antenna and, and, and a little, little uh, stylus. Yeah, you it know. had the stylus as well. That was another one as well, too. I enjoyed that phone. Yeah, exactly. Because these phones, I, another one that I, I remember having um, for me uh, was Sony Ericsson. And Ooh. Sony Ericsson for me was really good because. The one I had at the time, and I have one on my list. I didn't have this one because I didn't have that much money. Um, but <laughs> I was a kid. I was a fucking kid at this time. I, might have I remember like 15, this when my older brother 14. had this phone. So, but like, <laughs> I had a Sony Ericsson. I think it, it was on AT and T before they went to singular to back to AT and T because that happened as well too over these times in two thousand. But I had this Ericsson, and the reason why I loved it is because remember the polyphonic ringtones? Wow. Yep. Them things, and it, it yep. was it, it, yep. it basically was like I, I can't even describe it to you. Like it was a sound that just was very primitive. It was your favorite song, 
but like I don't even know, like a video, like it was on NES. It was like your favorite yes. song you yes. had, but it was on an NES game. Yes. My Ericsson, you could record, yep. and then you could turn it into a ringtone. Yep. And I feel like the cell phone folks realize, wait, we could sell y'all ringtones, and that feature disappeared from every phone. Yep. Like every phone back then was like, oh, no, 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 you gonna no. buy? You get ninety nine cents. Ninety nine, and then folks got remember that, remember that was a whole music market. Like yes. folks got rich off ringtones. Yes. Ninety nine cents for their yes. ringtones. Maybe a one ninety nine ringtone, depending oh, on. Oh yeah, they, the, 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 the popular. If it was top forty. Definitely paying more than 99 cents. You're definitely paying more than 99 cents. Another thing that, like, we were talking about in this conversation as well, too, is, like, remember when folks would leave, put the, uh, the music on their voicemail? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put that thing up to the, to the radio. And you'd be, you, you, you be waiting for the song. You'd yeah. be waiting by the, by the radio for your song. And then, huh, scramble, get the phone. You reach the voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's a different time. Don't take too much time and waste my time or your time. Just leave a quick note for me. I get back to you as soon as I can. That was yours. No, but something <laughs> like something it. Like something it. like it. I'm trying to tell you something like it. Oh my God, you want to be as cool as possible. Cool as possible. Cool right. as possible. Um, and oh, it was just... I got chastised. Like I put the at the time. The you know the attitude era was king yeah. for WWE. Oh God! Yes. So I used the rocks. Uh, oh God! Beginning of the rocks. <laughs> his first, you know, like his very first one, and a person that I was uh, interning with left a message on my phone. So I end up seeing you know, see, you know she said so you know left the message. So when I end up seeing her, she ends up telling me it's like. Don't ever do that again because yeah, yeah, it's not not professional. And it's like, okay. And yeah. I was, you know, 20-something, so, you know, it didn't mean anything that but, but it was the thing to do. The right. technology was new. It, it was, was like, what are we going to, what are we doing with this? What can we do with this? How much fun can we have? Now, you leave a voicemail, they, they, People they showing you your crazy. age. They're exactly. Like, what you doing? Why aren't you texting? Because think about, <laughs> right? Think about this, though. Voicemail, remember voicemail technology just being on your home phone. That was insane. Bro, like an answer machine. Answer then, a oh, machine. But remember, the days of running home to delete the message from your oh God. that they were sent from school. Oh God. Oh man, I remember those days. I always got caught because obviously I went to school out of the MCPS, but I lived in DC, so I couldn't get my grandmother was the one who lived the statue of limitations over on this shit, obviously. But um they can't get me now. And, <laughs> can't get me now. <laughs> um but yeah, like I could never get to those messages. So they were always there and my grandmother Oof. would then call my mom. So it was ne I never there was never a time in my life because it would be really weird to like be going to like Montgomery County schools but had like a two oh two number in the uh the, the directory when it came out. That would yeah. be a little weird. But not but to your point there, yeah, the, the, the answering machine was that. Um, different seats. So I have, I got a list here, y'all. I got a list of phones. Tez's top five uh, phones of the 2000s. Um, and I, do we have, are they going to go up on the screen? Or? Starting at five. Oh, you didn't get, oh, they sorry, they was in the document. Starting at five. They was in the, it's starting at five on here. So we, folks can go look up, and I'll describe these phones for you as well. Starting at five. It's going to be the Nextel i860. Okay. All right, so the i860, uh, if you go and search this phone, it'll pop up. It was the Nextel. It was a black and blue Nextel. Yep. Um, color LCD, really crisp camera. I was going to say, this was the phone that changed it. That changed the camera game. Yes. This was the, cam the phone that could take... I mean, sure, if we compare the pictures with trash. Compared yes, to oh, my God. Day. I'll tell you but, this. Looking up, I'm glad we don't even put the pictures up because these pictures are so old. They're from a different time on the Internet that I don't ever find. Like, they're all pixelated. Yeah, it's crazy. Every one. They're I can't blurry. find one that's they're clear. Blurry. It's like this is a different era. But the phone also had a flash. Oh, my God. That's that, what changed And it the could game. be a flashlight. You could leave it on. That's you what could just changed. Turn, that is, like that is a great point. first that had, like, the flash. It's like, oh. Oh yeah, we could take some really good pictures now. Yeah, now we could take good pictures. That's a good point about that phone. The flash was insane, flash. and like if you left that flash on accidentally, your phone's dead. Oh, dead. It's over. Super with. dead. Yeah, yeah. go well, find that's, it. That's any phone of the era. Any phone. Uh, yeah. If At you used one it, hour. If you used it, <laughs> yeah, it was dead. You had forty-five minutes. Yeah. You had most yeah. phones. Yeah, I feel like you had forty-five minutes. They started as emergency things. Exactly. And now you know before was, the computers yeah. about. All right, y'all gonna laugh it for me. This one, this one here is in the Sony Ericsson family. Here, go look this one up as well too. This is a P eight hundred. Now, I picked this P eight hundred. Where did I first see this? And y'all gonna laugh at me? 
I saw this. Bow Wow had this joint in the video. Oh, God. I swear, yo. Because I was about to say. Yeah, yo, it was an insane phone. Because it had the keyboard, but it could flip over, and it was just a stylus and a screen on the front of it. So you just had this. It, the, the keyboard flipped over, and then it was on the, like, you could just tap on the on the screen itself. And then, like, on the back, another camera with flash. Huh. Another phone. Like, but this one, again, huh. I can't even lie. Okay. Saw this one in the Bow Wow video. I really wanted The phone was like $600 when it came out. And this is like back then. I was about to say with inflation. Boy, exactly. That'd be a $3,000 phone today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> phone, Easily. The phone was insane. The phone was insane. So, yeah, that's that's what that's going ahead uh, at number four spot. All right. Number three, we're going back to Nextel. And mm-hmm. I think you mentioned this here. Mm-hmm. It's the I-930. The 930, baby. The 930... It took it basically took what was really hot in the I eight sixty and just steroids. It's, it's steroids. steroids. Just I, it, everything about it. I think it had a head like a, a proper headphone jack on there. Another flash on there that was insane. Insane flash. Bigger screen again. If like that thing was loud. Was it? Did the antenna still come out or was it short? I think it was just. It was, a, short. it was a, it was an out one. It was, it was, it was a short. It was the in, it was the in, yeah See, introduction of the short. Yeah, antenna. the little thumb. Well, we didn't need to get as you high into the sky yeah. to go ahead and catch the uh, to catch the actual. Yeah. Uh, it was just a different time for y'all again. We're getting really. <laughs> this is just really <laughs> different, time. This is different time. All right, number two. This was my phone, and I will always reign supreme. And if you combine it with a Nextel and just had that thirty dollar data plan, it was love. And we talking about that sidekick. That sidekick. Oh, my. First of all, it took another old thing, which we can get to one day, is like old social networks on there. Because it wasn't even social media, just the social networks. Like uh, AIM. We can take it. But this was the AIM machine. Yeah. This thing, and it made a sound when it swiveled up. Yeah. You when swivel you, up. You kicked it, when you <laughs> kicked it up. And then, like, yeah, no sidekick. Yeah. Uh, it would sit there just as, a, and like, again, you looked a little crazy with it at your face. But now that we look at what the phones we have in our face, not really crazy. Not crazy at all. Then, because it didn't flip and it swiveled, yeah. it's like, yo, you have a swivel phone and it just yeah. sits on, it doesn't flip. This sidekick, this, the operating system, I'm going on my tech nerd shit right here. The operating <laughs> system on this here was superb. It was so good. It was the best. Your MySpace looked amazing on this when you look. When, oh, when it, 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 comparatively to anything else, you couldn't even get on MySpace, MySpace on everything Black else. Black Planet. All those you things. You're aging yourself, man. I am. That's fine. I'm talking about flip phones. This is true. I'm, I have, I'm, this is a segment about flip phones in the 2000s. And we're talking about the introduction of flashes on Flash. cameras. <laughs> Woo! Yo, the, <laughs> yo, you old as shit boat has sailed, and I am on it. Um, oh, God. Uh, yeah, that's number two. All right. Number one. Come on now. You know what that is. For me, obviously, you know what that is. is the introduction of iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. June 29th, <laughs> 2007. It's a bright summer day. Yeah. <laughs> like, and yeah, and you, again, we've known each other a long time. It's a bright summer day. You remember when I came down and I we, we was in a studio and I was like, hey, yo. Yeah. I just yeah. seen something yeah, crazy. You could, yeah, you, yep. And yep. like, come on, sit down and let's watch this keynote. Yes. And y'all was looking at me like, what you mean we about to go sit down and watch a, a, a presentation? Keynote? You mean PowerPoint? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? A keynote Yo, and, yeah. about a product? About a product, yeah. And that's what changed the game. Though. MacWorld Apple. 2007. Uh, yeah, that changed. That was insane. Steve came out there. He introduced that iPhone. He he, he sold it so well. Talking about we got a revolutionary phone, a oh, revolutionary boy. internet browsing device, uh, and a widescreen iPod, and like. And, there, and made it impossible for you not to have it. Yeah. Um, I won't even go into, like, obviously getting this phone and enjoying this phone, having it early and just, like, be, like again, spending way too much money on this phone. But, like, just, again, I think this is where it ends, though. When it, And, obviously, the phones that come after this with, like, with Androids and, like, the phone kind of the switching out of, like, because even here you would have iPhone, BlackBerry, 
Yeah. Other, there were other phones still at this time. And there are still other phones, but it doesn't feel like, it feels like it ended almost here. America. There In America, yes. Let me be America. very, I'm being very myopic with that. Yes, because globally, and oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, things, oh, man. doing yeah, a lot they, crazier things yeah, than any of these yeah, phones they, here are doing. They, they, they're not so, for no Oh, app. but let me add on something else. Okay. So thanks to the iPhone, um, Steve and his crew, pretty much his crew, messed up the whole essence of dealing with um, editing because I'm a professional editor. So their main focus completely, completely went to iPhones mm. and left out when we had, um, you know, with their editing software, visual, visual video editing software. And a lot of people say this. Yes. We went consume. We went consume. I say you we went like fully consumer. Team. You consumer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm still invested uh, in But we went full consumer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So thanks to the, sadly that, with that being in mind, you know, they allow themselves to sort of slowly go fully mm -hmm. on consumer mode. Yep. Forget about the professionals. And a lot of professionals to this day still are upset that, hey, you guys had a great product, Ugh. but then you mess it up to the point where you try to make it everything user-friendly, which is fine, but at the same time, you just made your main focus was the consumer and forget about the full-on professionals. <laughs> so, and now you don't hear anybody talk about, you know, their editing software, you know, video, video, video editing software or anything like that. All you see now Products. is iPhone stuff. And it, look where the iPhone is now. It, people are more complaining about now because of the fact that you keep buying accessories to add on just to yeah. the point of just having a phone to call somebody. You keep featuring about, oh, look at, we got a brand new lens that can shoot like movie making shit. We can, hey, you can dip that, edit it in the phone now. You can yeah. do this, 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 and this. Yeah. And it's like, dude, it's not, a freaking, it's not a switch knife. Yeah. It's, it's freaking supposed to be a phone. It's supposed to call my mama when I'm in problems, okay? Yeah. But no. They, it's, yeah, thank you, iPhone, for I, fucking everything up. All right. I mean, hey, look. I, hey, look. Thank you. Look, I there's not much argument that's going to happen here. Like, look. Got your green versus the blue team. It's kind of crazy. Come That's on, insane. Man. It's insane. Why they had to do that? That was a wild move. They didn't I do have think to there do should that. be. I think there should be standard text messages across or SMS across everything. Come on, man. Um, because it's a new. It's a new BBM. It's that's what it is. It's kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, then you guys did a great job of making me feel really bad about being an iPhone user. Psych. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do not feel bad about that. I enjoy my phone. I we enjoy have two Mac products on the table. Yeah. We have two. Mac products in our pockets. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they're right here. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, you hear that music you've never heard before, which means that this shit is over. Um, thank over. You to, thank you to Big Yay, man. Thank you, yo, uh, for coming in today, yo. It's thank a pleasure. You, thank, it's thank, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Much. I appreciate uh, you, both. Nah, yeah, like. And I appreciate you, Chip. Wherever you are, I appreciate you. Right, for, letting, for sharing your platform. All right, look, man. I thank you for forcing me to work today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, with that, it's been an awesome time. Again, I, now I'm gonna be like asked to do this when I'm not like I know that's gonna happen. Um, or you know maybe not. <laughs> no, it's probably gonna happen. <laughs> um, thank you to our uh, our radio partners, WHUR ninety six point three, Magic one hundred two point three. You, <laughs> if you listen to Petey Green and everything black and beautiful in between. Um, thanks to NOTN for keeping us on another week. Uh, Next tail sidekick danger iPhone. <laughs> um, thanks to our digital me uh, media meatball Isaac Elam. Thanks to our home on the interwebs, coplaymedia.com. Uh, and thanks, as always, to our family here at Beltway Radio for making us sound as smooth as Congress decreeing a national holiday instead of giving black folks reparations. Happy Juneteenth. Uh, where can they find you on social media if you're on that? Or oh, you would look uh, at me kind of crazy like not to go find me. You can't find me. That is real. We cannot you find you. You can't find me. I, 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 I like to stay off of the uh, interwebs, so if you ever find me, it'll be right here. All right, there you go. So you'll find him here on a show. Um, <laughs> on a show. On a this show on Bellway Radio and beyond. Um, yeah, you can find me, you know, in that hellscape that is Twitter now. Yo, my for you is insane. It is three levels below, below hell on what they show me on there. I'm like, oh, this ain't for me. 
This ain't for me. See, um, see, that's a personal problem. Yeah, it ain't for me. It ain't my problem. Um, you can find me. On, <laughs> ain't my problem. You can find me on Instagram at Catch Him Cordy. Um, yeah, and that's the show. Um, I'm Tez. That's Yay. You tuned into a show once again on Beltway Radio and Beyond. Sweeps. Good night.